Right, okay everyone, welcome to Friday's video and uh, me and Stevie are both wearing uh, that Adidas gear that we were slagging off a couple of weeks ago, so good to know we can't be accused of double standards. Stephen, how are you? I'm good. I, yeah, I've never bad mouthed Adidas. I, I think they're brilliant. That did the Celtic gear. They're, they go hand in hand. They're just fantastic. Brilliant. Would never criticise them. No. Um, did you know, this is a really weird tangent to start on, but I love any excuse to, to slag you off. Um, did you know there were only 20 Stevens born in Scotland in 2023? Now, that's both spelling, so that's V and PH. Um, oh, I, well, listen, brother, I'm, I'm the PH, I'm the PH, don't worry about that. 82 Hamish's, though. That's uh, almost four times, sorry, more than four times as many. Um, you're a man of the past. How does that make you feel? Well, that is very much, that's, uh, listen, I thought I've been living in the past for ages. If it was up to me, I'd be in 2005, when Nuts Magazine, Zoo, when Yorkie, <laughs> when, York, when it was for men in good old flare jeans, Hamish. Aye. Gnocchi? Gnocchi, aye. Oh, Yorkie. I thought you said gnocchi, like the, the pasta. God's sake. That was that for men. Don't worry um, about that. I, I looked up some uh, some other names you may be interested in. By the way, most uh, people are turning off at the moment. Most popular boy's name was uh, Luca. Most popular girl's name was Isla. Uh, I looked up some Celtic-related ones. No Anges, surprisingly. I thought that maybe would have been at least one in there. Uh, a number of Henricks in recent years. I don't think there was actually any in 2023. Um, most interesting finding, Stevie, 34 baby boys named Rayo in Scotland in 2023, and that's up from like a maximum of two in years before. So right there is the Hitati effect. Well, Hamish, I'm a man that complains about the modern world, and that right there is a reason why. What a, what a stupid bit of trivia. What a daft fact. And I don't understand what's going through parent seeds. I really don't. But all the best to them. No harm to the way. But let's talk about you know Celtic. What, you know that there could be people watching this who have a kid called Rayo that you've just absolutely slagged off. Can I apologise on Stevie's behalf? I don't know. I don't know what's up with you. Oh, listen, today, I'm in a, Stevie. You seem very I'm, agitated. I've not been well recently. I'm in a right hump. I'm in a right hump. But I'm all right now. I was, uh, was gubbed with strep A last week. It was hilarious. I really recommend it. But. I'm getting at it now, Hamish. It's just I was in a good mood and then you asked me to come on at quarter to nine at night and I've got to put up with you and your nonsense. So let's just get this one over and done with, shall we? Right, okay. That really sets us up for a good video. Let's get this over and over and done with. Right, let's move on, talk about Celtic. The the big story um, that has emerged is the, the verdict for this uh, riveting Brendan Rodgers case that I know has gripped you in recent <laughs> days. Um <laughs> Right, it's fair to say, a, a, what's they saying, a broken clock is right twice a day and um, this daft idiot has actually been proven right here. Um, after combing through the, the recent cases on uh, Wednesday's video, I came to the conclusion that Brendan Rodgers would get a two-match ban from the SFA with one of those being suspended. And lo and behold, that's exactly how things have worked out. So um, the verdict was a one-match immediate ban for Brendan Rodgers, that will apply to Sunday's Premiership match at Livingston, uh, while one match will be suspended until the end of the season. So um, I assume that means if he steps out of line again um, and tells the truth, maybe uh, he'll get you know another match ban. But the big story, Stevie, is he'll be back for Ibrox. A Celtic Football Club statement said, clearly we are disappointed with the outcome of today's hearing. Although we will accept the panel's decision, the manager appeared at the hearing today and his defence was presented robustly and thoroughly. Like many other clubs, we will continue to press for the highest standards in relation to the VAR process in Scottish football. That um, legendary lawyer, uh, we hired Nick DeMarco, also tweeted saying, a pleasure as ever to represent Celtic FC and Brendan at today's hearing. I'm looking forward to getting back up to watch a match at Celtic Park soon again. Uh, so Brendan will be in the, the dugout for Ibrox, Stevie. What would you make of all of this? Thank God it's over and done with. I mean, I, I actually watched your video the other day, Billy. Believe it or not, I actually did. And I didn't realise um, it was a common thing, you know, for all these tribunals and how played out they are. Because it was almost like a month ago since the, the Hearts game, wasn't it? I think the 3rd of March yeah. or something, right? Maybe? Coming up to four weeks, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I was actually listening to you break that down as to why it was 
so long and everything because that was the one thing for me i just i just found crazy but i remember it's, it's mad it's, i guess you know I'll, i didn't think brendan was ever going to get hammered i think there was all this uh, wishful <coughs> thinking um from maybe other clubs fans that he was going to be getting you know hit with like a five and six game ban i was reading in some forums stupidly enough because i think the the justification for that or the, the thoughts thought process there was when um jim goodwin of aberdeen at the time was handed an eight match ban because i think he claimed that ryan portis it was just he accused him of blatant cheating now i think brendan was was knew what he was doing because i think if brendan used the words with John Beaton, where he said he's an out-and-out cheat, he's going to get the, the book thrown at him. So I think Brendan knew what he was doing. This is a, this is a, a very smart man, well, um, we're talking about here, and Brendan pretty much pre-plans everything he's going to say in the media, everything he's going to be doing in the media. Um, He's always been like that. So I think he knew uh, when he used the word incompetence that it questions the official. And obviously it's going to get the SFA tabloid part of your top beaks. It's going to get them um, riled. The Blazers. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but not at a point where it's going to, you know, get them so incensed, shall we say, Hamish, and they're throwing the book at them. Um, I don't think that was ever going to be the case. Truth be told, um, I actually <laughs> I really forgot all about it that it was happening. What a Celtic fan. I really forgot it was actually happening until, you know, you reminded me on the video um, the other day. What a channel. But aye, it's good to have it over and done with. It's good that, okay, he's going to be missing the Livingston game. Not ideal, but I think the the team will be able to focus on that and it should take care of itself. Should. And then, of course, he'll be back for Ibrox, which is a biggie. The other type of game that Brendan Rodgers pretty much lives for, if you were to say to Brendan, you know, it's the big thing you're looking forward to, coming back at Celtic, right? I mean, he'd be saying already four Rangers games a season, he... Honestly, he, that's what he lives and believes for. So he'll be relieved at that. I think the club will too. And yeah, it's just a case of drawing a line under it now, Hamish, and moving on, thankfully, to talk about football. Yeah. Um, I mean, the club said that they were um, disappointed with the outcome, but I sense that they're probably, you know, deep down kind of um, all right with it. Um, you know, he's obviously going to miss Sunday. I mean... Even without Brendan Rodgers on the touchline, if we can't beat Livingston on Sunday, the, the poorest team in the league who have won three matches all season, then we kind of don't deserve much out of this season, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I think Sunday will be fine. And it, I think it will be a boost having him on the touchline. I know people were kind of keen to point out that the team should be fine anyway, but you want you know, you know, want as many things going for you as possible at Ibrox, given that a lot's going to be against you and having your manager in the touchline's a, a bit of a given. So um so that's positive. Um and I, I don't really have anything else to add about that and I sense you don't either. So yeah, can we talk about the football to Please. quote a Mr. Hugh Keevens? <laughs> Please. Uh right, Rogers gave an update, I believe, in Celtic T V about injuries. Um he said, uh, with Cameron now back to fitness, so tick, and the imminent return of our captain, Callum McGregor, and instrumental midfielder, Rio Hatati, this could make a big difference. Did Brendan Rodgers actually say that? I can't imagine him saying, like, why would he say instrumental midfielder, Rio Hatati? It's like a what a commentator would say rather than the manager. Hi everyone, Hamish from the future. Just a quick note to say that it was actually Jerry McCulloch who said that quote on screen, not Brendan Rodgers. I'd seen it written as Brendan Rodgers, reported by someone as Brendan Rodgers, but after watching the stuff back on Celtic TV, it was Jerry McCulloch. But, you know, the point remains. That's good, though. It seems like, you know, imminent return of Callum McGregor. Does that mean McGregor plays on Sunday, Stevie? Mm, maybe features. I don't know about starts. There's a lot. He usually starts though, doesn't he? Like he very rarely, even when he's coming back from an injury, like someone like Hatati, you would you would put him in the bench and bring him on. But definitely, McGregor would usually start now. I think you. I, th I sense you may be right. I sense you may be right. Who might you argue after you predicted that Furuhashi would be starting and not either for mm -hmm. the game against? Who was it again? Who did we beat before? St. Johnston. St. Johnston. Aye, that's you're, having a, you're having a great one today. They're, 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 they are a forgettable team, let's be honest. <laughs> let's get real. But no, um, you predicted that one. So I think I think you're right. I think McGregor will start. I think he will. Um, well, don't know if he'll get the full game, but you know what he's like. I mean, Cal McGregor, uh, rightly or wrongly, 
would play every single game, every single minute if he could. Now, you know my thoughts on that, being highly critical of it, but, you know, this is me who gets out of breath walking up the stairs to go to the kitchen, whereas, Mc- <laughs> I mean, where McGregor can be out for three weeks or something and he could probably easily run and, and influence a game. Um, he's he's not admittedly done a, a lot of this season, not not done enough of, but I really hope for the run-in, um, the team bring their A game. I think they hope they get their big dog attitude on, remind everybody why they're title winners, why they're treble winners, and I hope, you know, Callum McGregor and uh, the rest of their big players grab that game by the scruff of the neck on Sunday um, and then really set the tone for what is going to be a really important um, run-in. I think, um, I don't know if you want to talk about the sort of feelings getting into this one, and I'll just keep it on mm-hmm. McGregor now, but um, I'll, I'll let you get to that then. But yeah, I, th- no, I think. No, go for it. Well, I, I just feel, you know, Cam- Cameron and Carter Vickers, that's the big one for me because you know how much, how highly I think of him, but I also have the fear of, you know, what it's been like. It's been like, it's been like me and Celtic AM this season, Hamish. Missed a couple and then been back one week. I've <laughs> been played with injury like uh, good old Cameron. But, um, and we can't do without you. Well, sad isn't it? But no, I mean I'm a good I'm a good martyr, but I dare say CCV is a save as a far better personality and attitude than I do in that respect. But no, I, I I'd be really really worried about playing him on that pitch. At the same time, I look at it and say should Celtic should be able to beat Livingston without Cameron and Carter Vickers, but it's mm. that but it's that big a game that do you risk him? And I would say only. If he is a hundred percent fit, if he's deaf already, to last the ninety as well, because we kind of get to this point, Hamish, where we're playing CCV for sixty minutes or so, he comes off, and then it's like you know Welsh or scales at the back again up against Livingston, and um, because you you saw what that was like a few weeks ago, they took the back yeah. against Livingston at Celtic Park. Never forget, it. it's still the old Almondville to me. Never mind that, but um, I mean. Them at Celtic Park but were disastrous. So can you imagine Welsh and Scales? You know, CCV goes off, six, gets his sixty minutes, and we're like, we're, we're holding on against the, the big shelling they'll be no, be no doubt doing for like half an hour if there's just maybe a goal in it or something. It doesn't bear thinking about. So it's a real conundrum. But this is why Brendan gets paid three million pounds a year at Celtic to make these calls and why I'm you know nowhere near that and just able to speculate. Yeah, I mean, it's the question for me is what worries you more. Cameron Carter Vickers potentially picking up an injury on that pitch on, on Sunday or Celtic playing without Cameron Carter Vickers. And I agree with you know, we we should have enough to beat Livingston, but we barely did in the cup game at Celtic Park a few weeks ago without Cameron Carter Vickers. Um I mean the the guy just makes such a difference. Like I'm not telling anyone anything they don't know. He makes such a difference to that entire team when he plays. So I want him playing. Um and yeah, the pitch isn't ideal. I get that. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be fussed with taking him off after an hour, mate. See if we see if he starts and we're, we've won that game. You know, ideally, I don't know, three goals up. Um, I wouldn't be against you know taking him off, wrapping him in cotton wool for for Ibrooks. The same would go for all of our key players for me. Kyogo, you know, get Ida back on. Um, after an hour, if if the game's you know won comfortably, which obviously we hope it will be, Callum McGregor, uh, you know Rio Hatati, I think would probably be a sub rather than starting. Um, but I've not got an issue with doing that. I think we need to be clever. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we talk about the pitch. I don't. I've not actually you know looked into the numbers over whether we've had lots of injuries on that Livingston pitch, and I can't think at the top of my head, but. I think CCV, you know, starts that game on Saturday. I'm pretty confident he will, and I think he'll make a a big difference. He won't, um, he won't, he won't be starting on Saturday, mate. The games on Sunday. <laughs> oh, God, it's actually Monday here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, do you want to run through your team, mate? I'll put you right in the spot just to get my own back. And uh, in fact, we can have a discussion about it. So, obviously, Joe Hart starts and goals. Hopefully doesn't get sent off this time like he did last time. We, we don't have to see Scott Bain. Back four, does it kind of pick itself? Liam Scales should be back for this. He wasn't mentioned by Roger. I, I just don't know if it... I, just, I don't like I don't like seeing Scales in the team. It, it's not personal, but it's he's, just... He's fine next to CCV. Performances, though, isn't yeah, it? but... So, I mean, so is most players, but I mean, even, even Welsh, I think, is a wee bit... 
I don't know, Welsh is slightly quicker on the ball than Liam Scales, who just seems to take an age passing it. I know what you mean. Mm. Most players alongside CCV are generally okay, but you know we saw that against uh, against Hearts at Tynecastle as well. I mean, the guy is only human. You know what I mean? It's some other players are only their potential will get them through some games, and CCV can only do so much. But he's got to look after himself as well, first and foremost. Um, and I just worry about him picking up anything. As I said, on on that surface, but yeah. Anyway, getting into that, I think I would actually. I would persevere with Stephen Welsh. I would go with Stephen Welsh and CCV for that one. Even though you've not got the, the balance of a left footer next to it's the right just footer. Because I honestly just feel um, Liam Scales has been so, so bad for us recently. And since has he been uh, worse, worse than Welsh, though? I would say I would say he has been worse. In my opinion, mm. watching him, he's so slow in the ball, the way that he just lets the, always lets the ball bounce. And I'm not saying Welsh has been anywhere near commanding. He's, he's had some shockers too, but... I just think Welsh next to CCV is uh, gives me a wee bit, so a wee bit more um, assurance than, than Liam Scales would. And I get what you're saying about the balance, but and people won't agree with that. People pick up on that and say I'm being harsh on him, but just for the way I felt watching Liam Scales in the last five six games, I would much rather Welsh next to him. Uh, right back, it obviously be AJ, and then the big one in midfield. You know, Cal McGregor. Yeah, if he's in. If, Who, if who's he, your left back? Sorry. Uh, Greg Taylor. It's quite a Greg, tough, tough one. Greg, Lots of options there, don't we? <laughs> Greg Taylor, of course, where he will be targeted constant. The ball will be shelled at him. Uh, he'll really win a header, but we've just got to get through this, haven't we, now, at the end of the season? This is what it is. Um, it, it shouldn't be the case, but let's not be too negative about this and move on to your midfield. I'll throw it back at you. Who's the, who's the midfield three, Hamish? So it's a case of, you know, who plays... Um, who do I want to play? So obviously O'Reilly, I think, would be one of the players. Um, uh, it's all about whether you know that imminent return means Callum McGregor is back. Imminent, imminent could still mean Ibrox. Although as I'm saying that, I'm kind of doubting myself. So imminent probably does mean this Sunday. Um, so McGregor, I think, would start the game if he's fit, and probably. Iwata, so you'd play Iwata, the deeper McGregor and O'Reilly. That should have, you know, a pretty yeah. decent balance. We've yeah. seen that midfield a, a few times. And then ideally you'd have Hitati on the bench, maybe playing half an hour, Bernardo yeah. there as well. Remember a couple of years ago, um at the Anthony Mac when McGregor played a wee bit further forward. I think Beaton started in the, the three one one. That was one the, of the Yeah, that was a vital game, wasn't it? Yeah, you went and McGregor played a wee bit further forward. He missed a penalty, right? But he was really influential that game. Um it mm. was fantastic. And that really that was one of the, the games before the break and we came back right after the break and beat Rangers at Ibrook, so if you remember. So yeah, I'd like to see McGregor play a bit further forward, a Wata sitting behind and then O'Reilly there too. And then I think the front three is, is interesting because will Brendan be tempted again to throw Adam Eder on because it'll be a more physical game. But I think we should focus on ourselves and how we play. And I think just the, the last outing performance from Furuhashi was just different class. So I would have him through the middle. Uh, Nicholas Kuhn's got to be kept on the right. And then it'll be um, Dyson on the left, I would say. It will be, um, I don't know if you caught this, but Yang apparently had a really good international break with South Korea. Um, they were playing at a, a kind of under-23s thing in Saudi Arabia. I think he got their best player award at yeah. that tournament. So he's clearly very confident and he's looked better. I think what the fans want to see is um, Kuhn on one side and Yang on the other. I, I'm pretty confident we won't see that from the start on Sunday. I think Dais and Maida will start. And I, I, you know, I've made my, my thoughts abundantly clear in Maida. I love him and I think what he brings to games like this is, is great. And he was really good in the last game at Livingston, I think. Yeah, so, really. in fact, he scored a, he scored a few goals um, at that stadium. He's he got the hat trick against start for me. Too. Of course he did. So he's he's probably you know off the top of my head he's probably scored more goals against Livingston than, than any other team. Mm -hmm. And I always think stuff like that does matter. So my done the left for me, Kuhn. I'm just I don't know about you, but I'm just really excited to see this guy. I can't believe the the difference you know from a couple of weeks ago when I honestly was just thinking straight away. And I know we judge players early, but I was thinking, oh, this is just another one that's just not going to really do anything. Um, and I just thought the last couple of games, especially against St Johnson. He looked electric, and I'm I'm actually excited to watch him again and see the areas he can get into, and hopefully he can just give that Livingston 
left back is at Montano, um, just a, a torrid time again. Um, so I'm, I'm buzzing to see him. I know he was dealing with stuff when he first came to the club that as fans we never really realise, but I think that's a good team in general. Um, and yeah, hopefully we get to see the likes of Hitati off the bench. I, I just think Hitati, I know people look at it and say, oh, he maybe takes some time to get up to speed and all of that. But I just think when he comes on, you'll see such a difference in the team straight away because he does things quickly. There's wee balls around the corner that no one else attempts that Hitati will. And um, I think he could be transfor- transformational for, for us. I just think the fatigue factor with Hitati has got to be taken into account because we've seen it before when he does come back for injury. The, um, he- you know, he's, in terms of his pressing and in terms of the intensity of, of him. Um, he, he does take a good few games to get up to speed, you remember. I think that semi-final, he wasn't fully fit against Rangers last season. Uh, and he was, I'm not saying a man down, but he was um, way off it. I think Rio Hitati, to be absolutely at his best, has to be 100% fit with a good few games behind him. So while, yeah, I appreciate what you're saying about how, <coughs> excuse me, how um, you know excellent he is and how technically gifted he is, I do believe that I think in order to see the best of him, it still has to be 100% Hamish. And I, I, but at the same time, I remember we beat um, St Mirren 3 0 and he came on with 20 minutes to go and he looked sharp and he looked decent. Albeit, though, that's it was what I've against, got in my head. But albeit, though, it was against a tiring St Mirren team who had been chasing the ball all the second half down to 10 men. So you've got to take that into account. But, you know, if, if, you, if you're saying to me, if Atati has a, a good half hour, 20 minutes or so against Livingston, they would just throw him in against Rangers at Ibrox. The answer is abundantly clear for me. It's not, it's a complete no, just because we had Hattie, if you look at him in his recent per- his performances at Ibrox, there's been like one good 45 minutes. Other than that, he's never been either fully fit or he's just been like right out of the game. So, yeah, I think it's it's going to have to um, play a game-by-game basis with Hattie and really see what the manager says about him. But I hope we do get to see him on Sunday. And... Um, yeah, hope he is getting back to full fitness for the actual run-in as well. Just give everyone a, another boost, won't it? Um, I know, you know, we'll come to the Rangers game, plenty of time to to look ahead to that next week. Um, but I'm already sensing a U-turn. You know how I like to change opinion, um, <laughs> yeah. like, like you do from time to time. And when you're talking about that midfield there, and I don't know, I'm kind of coming around to the idea potentially... Hitati, a sub at Ibrox, you know, to come on and you really add something to our game could be good if if that midfield, you know, looks really good on Sunday. I think I might take a bit of convincing to not go with that again at Ibrox because I'd be interested to see Iwata in that derby, McGregor playing a bit further forward, and obviously o- O'Reilly, who's kind of been our, our best player this year. So, yeah, I'm excited. Are you excited to to see the team back? Oh yeah, yeah, very much so, especially after the, um, the international break and watching Scotland just scunner me and take my enthusiasm out of football. That was a right, that was a right good laugh, mate. But um, no, I'm, a, I'm excited. I actually, I did say before it that was welcoming the international break, and I was glad for it because on a personal level, going to do a few things away that I would never get a chance to do, uh, going to Celtic Park or whatever. But no, so I'm glad for that, and it's good that uh, let some of your players come back as well. That's the most important thing. But yeah, I'm excited to see them. But here's a bit of a bombshell for you. I'm saying all this. I'm excited to see you and all that. Do you know? <laughs> I'm not going to get to see uh, the game on Sunday. All right, what are you doing? I'm, you are you allowed to share? Yeah, I'm flying out to uh, Serio Dussels. Dusseldorf? Yeah, I'm flying out. So, uh, fly oh, out. What, what a place. I know, fly out. Um, it's a 12 o'clock kickoff, isn't it? Yes. So there you go. I'll fly out at like quarter past 12, so... I'll get to see maybe 10 minutes or so on the, on the bold David Blaine, and then that's it. I'm away. So by the time I touch down, I'll find out the result. I'll, I'll be doing like a, I'll be a, a version of doing a you, what you do when you wake up and we've been playing yeah. at 3 o'clock. So phone will be off, I won't get a signal, and I'll just have to try and watch some of it back on the old uh, YouTube. So you just, like, the flight will, will arrive in Dusseldorf, and you'll get your phone out and just check the score right away? I mean, who am I kidding? I'll check. I'll, I'll check the score, but I'll have to see YouTube and all that. So, and it's just such a, a weird that kind of in, instant feeling of you literally just refresh your phone or whatever, and suddenly it comes up like 
the result and it could be anything like for I know it I know it doesn't change the result at all you not yeah. watching it obviously but it just you always feel in your own mind like because I'm not really? watching it anything could happen um no that's good I hope you enjoy yourself in, in Dusseldorf great city any memories of any specific games at the, the Tony Mac that come to your mind any any funny memories any anecdotes Stevie I think the um what is it the the best assist I've ever seen in this, literally, you know, I like to stay stuck in the past when it was the old Almond When it was the old Almond Vale, Jan Venegura Hesselink's first time right foot finish from uh, Nakamura's sublime assist. A 4 1 win in February 2007. It's always up here in this noggin. What a ball, what a finish. Uh, I was at that game as well, actually, but I think most recently, um, the one when we won 3 1, I think myself and Big John did a video after it. You were there, of course and the, the one when James Forrest scored because getting into that game I was really fearful we, we, we all knew about our uh, run against Livingston to beat us 1-0 that season that would be our last league defeat under Ange as well amazingly enough that season um, it was yeah it was because we could beat off what yeah. was it Hearts, Rangers and Livingston and then that was it mm -hmm. and I, of course we drew 0-0 with them when Gigi missed that penalty and I just remember thinking this is going to be another bogey game and we were only a, a week or so after the terrible uh, performance at Easter Road, but I was in a right, I was in a right huff. Remember the 0-0 one, and then Rangers well, drew to any game. <laughs> Rangers drew to each against Motherwell, but I was so impressed with how we handled that game. We were just so direct against Livingston. I think uh, Beaton was sitting that game, as I say, Callum McGregor yeah. further forward, and you know Maeda scored the opener. We were fantastic, and even though we missed the penalty, we didn't let the heads go down because I was thinking yeah. after that, oh no, this is here we go, they're going to score a, a free kick or something, or get a, get a goal out of nothing, but we controlled that game so well, and if you think about it ever since, Hamish, we've uh, went to that stadium, and we've yeah. always battered them ever since, so it's kind of been the catalyst for a turnaround and, and attitude going there, and not being fearful anymore, and just going there, knowing that we, you know, the greatest of respect, it's Livingston, we are the better team. Cue, uh, cue a 2 and I would defeat on Sunday now after I've said that. No, I mean, it's. Uh, I think you're right, that was the, the monkey off the back game, wasn't it? And since then, I mean, if you look at the last three games, like, there have been three of the easiest away games you'll see Celtic have. Uh, earlier in the season, we went down to 10 men and I think still won that game 3-0, going on about five or six, like, it was it was so easy. Can I just say as well, see that game? <laughs> I was in Milan that game as well, so that's twice against oh. Livingston on my way. How does he afford it? <laughs> Good to be... Nice wee enjoy it there for the trips. Yeah. Right, you get anything else to say, Stevie, or will we head off? No, I, th I think it's not nearly half an hour, isn't it? I think people have heard enough for me and probably just want you to get back to your solo videos as soon as. Yeah. Uh, no, it has been good to, to have you on. I've been aware during the international break that it has just been me. Obviously, Stevie said he wasn't well last week, but it's always good to get you on for a, a different uh, face and voice. Um and yeah, we're going to try and do it a bit more, I think, with, with various kind of people on the channel. Um, so I'm working on things. Don't worry about that. Thanks again for your support this week. Really appreciate it. Um, and enjoy the game on Sunday. Hopefully things go really well. I'll be back on Monday to look back on it all.